Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating honey with bubbles in Cinema 4D and X particles. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get unlimited access to more than 22,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The courses are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating everything from motion graphics to photography. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got four CG Shortcuts courses on there now, covering a bunch of stuff we don't normally go into on YouTube, and we're releasing new courses all the time. So if you want to give Skillshare a try, there's a link below for a free two-month trial that'll give you access to the entire catalogue of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts. So you can test it out and see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So we haven't done an X-Particles tutorial for a while, and they've made quite a few updates in the software since last time. X-Particles now comes bundled with the Fuse suite of plugins by Insidium for Cinema 4D, which is pretty handy. So let's start off nice and easy with this dripping honey effect. And we'll also try and get some nice bubbles in there just like this. So first things first, let's create a surface for our honey to drip onto. And we'll actually use a cube as our floor instead of the standard plane because I tend to find 3D objects work a bit better as colliders than 2D objects in X particles. But we will make this a bit thinner to be more like a flat floor. So maybe we'll make this two centimeters thick. And if we want the top of that surface to be at the center of our world, we just need to compensate for the thickness over here in the coordinates tab by bringing this down two centimeters. So that's nicely lined up with our scene now. So let's bring in some X particles. So up in the Insidio menu under X particles, let's grab an XP system. And we'll take a look at the XP emitter that's included in that system here. Under the object tab, our emitter shape is set to rectangle by default. So if we play this, all those particles are emitted from this rectangular shape. But I want our honey to look like it's coming out of a tap or maybe spilling out of a jar or something. So I think changing this to an ellipse might give our fluid a slightly more organic shape. Then we can move this up a tad so that our liquid is pouring downward. And we could just rotate this to face down or just change the direction of the emitter plane to negative Y. So now that's pointing down toward the floor. But as the source of our honey, this might be a tad too big. So let's reduce the radius of our ellipse down here. And we'll make it four centimeters by two centimeters. So we've got this little oval shape for our honey to flow from. And you can see those particles are now emitted in that shape. But they are passing through the floor at the moment. So let's rewind this and make our floor a collider object. So we'll right click on our cube and under the Insidium tags, we'll add an XP collider tag. And we'll tweak some of the collision settings down here. I don't want the particles bouncing off the floor. So let's zero that out. And to have them stick to the ground like honey, we'll also increase the friction. And we'll see what that gives us. And the particles are definitely falling and sticking into place, but it's definitely not looking much like liquid. And if we zoom in here, you can see these aren't actually even touching the floor. So we need to make these particles dynamic so they can interact with each other and the collider. So let's grab our dynamics folder and down under dynamics objects, let's add an XP fluid effects. And now if we play that, those particles are now interacting with the floor and we're getting a bit closer to a liquid simulation. But we'll definitely need to tweak some of these settings. So we better start by adding some gravity to our scene. So over in modifiers, we'll add a motion modifier and we wanna grab the XP gravity. And because we're making honey, our scene scale is pretty tiny. So let's compensate for that by changing the gravity strength from 981 to 98.1 centimeters. Then back in our XP fluid effects, let's also increase the accuracy of our simulation. Let's set this to high and we'll play that back again and maybe just frame this up a bit. And it is exploding a bit, but we are starting to get those liquid-like clumps of particles. So I think we might need to head back to our emitter and tweak some of those settings as well. Under the emission tab, I think we're getting the particle explosion because our particle radius is a bit too large for our small scene scale. So let's try bringing this down to 0.3. So those particles aren't so big that they're intersecting each other. 
We could also increase the birth rate while we're here. Let's bring this up to 5,000 and let's see what that gives us. All right, so that's starting to look a bit more like liquid now and those particles are piling up nicely. One thing we might wanna do though, is decrease the speed of the particles. So things are moving a bit slower like honey, which is a bit more viscous. So we'll drop that down to 60 and try that. Okay, that's looking good. But to make the simulation a little bit more interesting, let's maybe add some movement to our emitter. So let's right click on there and under animation tags, let's add a vibrate tag. And we can use this to add a bit of random motion. So we'll enable the position and I just wanna move this back and forth in the Z axis. So we'll zero out the Y and make the Z axis eight centimeters. And we'll also decrease the frequency and see what that looks like. Cool, so that's moving back and forth which gives us this nice overlapping effect in our liquid. But I think we still need to make some tweaks to our settings to make the fluid a bit more viscous. So let's try back in the emitter and this time we'll look in the extended data tab. And here under the physical data, we can bring the bounce down on our liquid as well to zero and the friction here up to 100 as well to make this nice and sticky. Then in the fluid data tab, we've actually got a control for viscosity. So for honey, we know we'll have to increase this. So let's try cranking this up to something like 900 and we'll try that. Okay, so we're getting there. It's starting to clump up and move a bit slower like honey. So we're well on our way. At this point though, it's probably a good idea to hit control D on the keyboard to bring up the dynamic settings. And over in the X particles tab, we can increase the accuracy of our fluid solve by bringing up the subframe steps. Let's try setting this to six. And I think doing this should bring us very close to the final result. And you can see how those particles are now keeping together and we're getting a nice thick looking fluid. And if we pause that there, you can see those nice bends and folds happening here. Okay, so now that we've got our simulation looking right, we're going to turn our particles into a mesh surface so we can render it out and so it looks more like liquid. So let's click on generators from our list here and down here, let's go with the XP Open VDB Mesher. And we'll need to tell this what to mesh, which in this case is going to be the emitter. So let's drag that into here. And it doesn't look like that's done anything, probably because our voxel size down here is a bit too large, which means we don't have enough resolution to mesh our very small particles. But if we drop this down to maybe 0.6, we now have a mesh wrapped around those particles. But ideally for this to look like honey, it should be quite a bit smoother than this and a lot less lumpy. So let's try bringing down the point radius first, which makes the mesh conform to our particles a bit closer. Then we can smooth this out over in the filter tab. So let's enable that, which starts smoothing things out straight away because we've got a median filter activated in here already. But let's deactivate that and I'll use a different filter. And as you can see, there's quite a few to choose from, but I think the best one is going to be the Gaussian or Gaussian filter. And that's actually done a pretty good job of smoothing that out. So we probably don't even need to tweak that. So now that we've got our nice smooth honey, we can take this one step further and add some bubbles inside as well. So we'll need another emitter and we can just hold control and duplicate this one. And we can even rename that to bubbles as well. So we know which one is which. And so we can see through the surface of our liquid to the bubbles inside. It might be easiest to just create a new material by double clicking in here. And over in the basic tab of our new material, we'll enable the transparency and we'll apply that material to our generated mesh, which allows us to see the bubbles inside. Then we can hide our old emitter for now and work on the bubbles inside. Let's go to the emission tab and I want quite a lot less bubbles than that. So let's decrease the birth rate and also the speed. Then we'll make these a tad smaller and add a little variation to that. And so the bubbles stand out a bit more in the viewer Let's go over to the display tab and change the icon color to something a bit brighter, like a nice yellow maybe. And we'll do the same to the particle color. We can just use the color picker to sample that same yellow. Then we might need to rewind to see that update. And if we play that, that's looking good. So we'll just need to make those inner particles renderable. So we'll need to give them some geometry as well. So back in our generators again, this time we'll use an XP generator. Then in the emitter spot here, 
we can attach our bubbles emitter. And now we can pick an object to be generated on each particle. So let's go with a simple sphere, which should make a nice bubble. And this needs to be a child of the XP generator. So we'll hold shift when we click on that. So it's added correctly in the hierarchy. And it's definitely a bit too big to begin with. So we'll need to drop the radius down. But before we do, we need to make sure our particle size is going to be driven by the size of our sphere. And we can check that back in the XP generator in the scale rotation and offset tab. We just need to make sure that this is set to particle scale. And if we go back here and bring the spheres radius down to something really tiny like 0.1 and play that back, we now have our completed honey drizzling effect with the bubbles inside following along nicely. And that's about it for this effect. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time or head over to our website where you can download all of our project files and loads of other CG assets and resources. Big thanks to this month's patrons and CG insiders. You guys are the best and there's no way we could make all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers guys. Okay, that's it for now. I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you wanna see in the comment section down below or you can leave a like or dislike and don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.